Welcome to the WWE Podcast Mailbag. It is Wednesday, July 6th, 2022. We're going to get to all of your emails, all of your voicemails as we get closer and closer to SummerSlam. We're now in that season of the year. WWE's WrestleMania of the summer. We're going to hear what all of you have to say right after this. So in addition to pro wrestling that I need every day, I don't know about you, I need coffee every day and I need quality coffee. That's why I go with coffeeofvalhalla.com. They get fresh roasted specialty coffee roasted the day it ships to your door. Again, it's coffeeofvalhalla.com. That's coffee of V-A-L-H-A-L-L-A, V-A-L-H-A-L-L-A.com. Because the owner is a former service member trying to take care of his battle buddies. He donates 50% of the proceeds to StopSoldierSuicide.org. So order today and use discount code 10 off all one word for a 10% discount or you can subscribe and save 15% off of your order so go get some coffee again at coffeeofvalhalla.com coffee of v a l h a l l a.com guys and also donate to a great cause and have a great cup of coffee guys coffeeofvalhalla.com this is WWE superstar Drew McIntyre and you're listening to the WWE Podcast. The The one that everybody wants, me. This is my idol. You're gonna acknowledge me. All right, everybody, welcome to the WWE Podcast again. It is heck is it wednesday wednesday july 6th 2022 and uh, just heads up i'm gonna make this show maybe a little more brief than normal um it's just that time of the week guys it's uh, I'm, i've added a a full hour plus video editing to my schedule and it's pinching my time to the point where uh, i'm starting to <laughs> to crack under the pressure and i want to be able to answer your guys questions and um, this is, as I say every week, but uh, just so you know, it is the most labor intensive show that I do with uh, just the, I guess, the uh, the process of putting it all together. And I, I love hearing from you guys, and I'm going to try to continue this mailbag show, but uh, I'm going to try to keep it to an hour. You know, um, I, I know some of you love the long form. I, uh, in some respects, do too, but just FYI, I'm going to maybe run through it a little quicker than I normally do. So, hey. What are you going to do? I'm one one man here, at least on the production end of things. So, all right. Well, I've already rambled enough, uh, and you guys know how to get me ad-free WWE podcast on Patreon, which, speaking of which, one plug I will make beyond Patreon for ad-free stuff is the WWE Slam, which is an offshoot of the WWE podcast, is available in video format for one hour every single Saturday night at 8 o'clock on the DuPont Now Network. So go to DuPont Now, D-U-P-O-N-T, now.com, and go sign up. And you can watch me talk about mostly Raw, um, but some of SmackDown and looking ahead to SummerSlam this coming Saturday night at 8 p.m. All right. Well, that brings us to our patrons, and let's uh, let's jump into it, everybody. And let's see who our very first email is from. Oh, who do I pick? Who do I pick? Uh, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with uh, Alex the French guy, fun patron. Let's see what he has to say. He says, "Hello, Matt. Alex the French guy, current two-time European champion. I like the current state of WWE in general outside of Roman Reigns holding the two titles. I suggest Roman should drop one of the belts." the WWE championship in a triple threat and don't take the pin. I mean, he already lost one match in DQ, but I don't think we will see that anytime soon. WWE shop released a new t-shirt with Roman holding two titles. Plus there's no way he loses against Brock. I, I mean, I can't emphasize enough that I think you along with the majority of fans feel this way that we don't even care how creative does it. I don't care if they go back on what they said about WrestleMania. I uh, for somebody that is that nitpicks about things that no one else cares about uh, on WWE television, this would be a 
big no-no, but I will let this slide if the benefit is to get the belt at least one of them off of Roman so that we can get back to a champion on Monday Night Raw. I would totally agree with this. Do I think they'll actually do it? No, like you said, probably not. You know, probably not. Uh, but if they already made merchandise for it and they love the visual of Roman, Roman holding up two belts, then they may hold off. But I think they know fans are getting a little bit tired of this and we they've made their point. They have made their statement, their message, whatever corporate buzzword you want to say, they have. And, you know, we, we understand, we're appreciative of it, and we're, we, we're glad we were able to live through a great heel run. But it's time, because it's no longer about just Roman Reigns. See, the net negative now is that you're, you are affecting in a, I think, a, a, a bad way, a lot of other guys that could be competing for a top championship, you are now negatively affecting those guys that can't work with Roman because he's not there. And every time he's there, Brock's there. And so it's the same thing over and over and over, uh, at least in the last few months. But you're again, the, the net negative, it's a net negative now is my point. It's no longer, well, Roman's not there, but there's more good than bad about it. I think we've f- swung the pendulum now the other way. And things are now, I think, a net negative. Yes, there's still some benefit, but overall, the the fact that they're that WWE is now kind of screwing with the careers of other guys for what, you know, for for, for what a, a thousand days as champion, as I've said. You know, what what is the big payoff here? What is the big payoff? Rock Roman. We all know that's coming, but nobody wants it for the championship. So, all right. Well, uh, let's see. As of as for Austin Theory, here's what I think could happen because I don't see in, in the in the war any way in the world he beats Roman. He could drop the briefcase to someone who legit could defeat Roman, like Cody, Drew, Seth, or he could um, be involved in a story, sort of a plan with someone else on. Let's cash in that way because if you do your way, you're going to, you're not going to beat him, and then the plan fails. Or he simply fails the cash in, but gets involved in a (sighs) storyline. Do I? Here's the thing: Do I think Theory's gonna be fail at the cash in now? (sighs) If he truly cashes in at SummerSlam, like he says he's going to, which is the worst kept secret ever. I mean, everyone has said, for whatever reason, not concealing it, that if they win the Money in the Bank briefcase, they were gonna cash in on whoever won that last man standing match. I mean, Paul Heyman was privy to it. Everyone's privy to it. So do I think Austin Theory would be successful if Roman Reigns retains? Um, Probably not. I just think it's a little too soon to have Austin Theory win. Now, he could tease a championship. He could, here's, what, here's my, my pick, my early guess as to what's going to happen at SummerSlam. Of course... This is a three three weeks out or so, three and a half weeks, and things could change. My picks could change based on what we see on TV. But I think what will happen is you're going to have Theory do exactly what he says. Uh, whoever wins, and I believe Roman will beat Brock still. I don't think anybody really believes Brock's going to win. Roman's going to win, and then Theory is going to cash in. Brock and or Roman may attack him which means he didn't have an actual cash in the bell never rang. And we get that mumbo jumbo stuff. That's what I think is going to happen where theory doesn't get to cash in fully. And he still keeps his money in the bank briefcase. And it was a failed cash in without actually cashing in, if that makes sense. So he still holds the briefcase to cash in at a later time, at which time, whenever that is, he does win. Do I think theory is going to become a champion within 2022? Probably not. I would imagine in 2023, when we flip the calendar to January and we're looking into WrestleMania season, that's probably maybe where WWE is going. If they truly want to establish Theory as a, you know, a a true top guy, I just don't think he's ready yet. You know, as much as I've praised him, the journey's too quick. Um, Now, he does have a lot of assets that you don't see in a 24-year-old, a lot of things that he feels ahead of his time for, but it doesn't feel right yet, and I think he would be doing more damage by doing too much too soon for the guy. 
He, I don't know if he'd know how to handle that at 24 years old. They know more than I do, obviously, but uh, I, I don't believe that he'll cash in successfully against uh, Roman. But he'll remain Mr. Money in the Bank because the bell never rang. So that's what I think is going to happen. Uh, in any, in, uh, anyway, in your closing, you said, however, I think in either case, they're going to get him slowly face. So many interviews floating around about him taking John Cena's role model role, uh, et cetera. That's all for this week. Thanks. I mean, he could turn baby face, but I, I love him as a heel right now. It, it's the step Roman never took, which is what led us here ultimately, right? Is the failed baby face run for six, seven years into an, a, a historic heel run. And now you have he, uh, Austin Theory going the heel road, giving time for people to hate him, ultimately to flip him. I mean, that, that's probably where they're going. They'll, they'll eventually flip him. Sure. So, all right, let's move on to Mr. Grim Reefer. He says, hey, WWE Podcast Universe, Grim here. The Judgment Day has really gone to crap. I would imagine they just leave Finn and Priest in it as a very low mid-card pair that just pump or just jump people every now and then. A bit like what they did with T-Bar and Mace. When Edge returns... I hope he's not wearing slip-on shoes and no socks. I understand why the rest turned on him. Well, I have to say, Grim, uh, <laughs> you know, I could see them bringing Edge back in that way. Kind of a dad look, you know? Uh, the, I'm, I'm not saying that'll happen. But I'm a little bit nervous about Edge's return, about how he'll look and, and, and how they're going to present him as this baby face. I mean, he can't come out to his old music. He, he, you, you just You would imagine he can't. Uh, I, you know, and when you look at the judgment day right now, it's in shambles. I mean, you can't even call it a group with two guys. It's just, uh, it's a de facto tag team. Like the judgment day should be three or more. Like a faction is three or more. You know, I didn't like when we had triple H and HBK reunite in 06. They had the 06 run to, I think 08 or so. As the second run with DX, they faced the Spirit Squad and, and everybody else, Vince McMahon, Shane McMahon, and they called them Degeneration X. I'm like, it feels like a group should have a bare minimum of three. You know, I, I don't know. I know that they were the core of DX, but a group should always have three. So when they call them the Judgment Day, I'm like, eh, I don't know. I, I, I need three people to call it a faction. But... Uh, yeah, they, right now they are not in a good place. At least they made they made a little bit of an appearance on Raw. I mean, that's a start. Even though they lost the match by DQ, that's a start. That there is hope that this group could be elevated. And I think Rhea Ripley's return, whenever that is, on top of whoever joins, if they continue to add a person or two, then they have more plans for that group. So. That's what I think is probably going to happen. All right. Ronda losing the championship is fantastic. Giving it to Liv is a step backwards. Liv winning is actually a worse decision than giving it to Nikki T-R-A-S-H. Let's see what you did there. Hopefully, she won't hold it for long. I imagine Bailey and Charlotte will both be back shortly. Yeah, there's a lot of people hanging out on SmackDown that have not yet returned, right? And there's, I mean, Sasha is rumored to possibly make amends with WWE. Bailey's out there, Charlotte's out there. They have some heavy hitters on SmackDown that are not yet back. Again, Sasha's up in the air, but certainly Charlotte and Bailey are a lock to come back. I think Bailey will be there before Charlotte. And we have Ronda. Well, I wouldn't say it's a demotion. I mean, at least we have someone who has been in the grind of the the uh, the profession day in, day out for seven, eight years. We didn't have someone ride in uh, and admittedly pick up the sport very quickly, but have an attitude about coming in and, you know, being this MMA star who I think, again, physically, I think she has all the tools, but from a pure organic fan support perspective and from the perspective of people seeing Liv grow up, quote unquote, in front of their eyes and having that connection with her and wanting to, to root for her for years. That's something Rhonda doesn't have. Now, Liv winning in the manner she did does take away a little bit of her championship run where instead of, you know, climbing the mountain, winning tournaments or, you know, winning a number one contenders match and then pulling off the victory in a one-on-one -on -one when the, the champion's not at their most vulnerable, 
certainly as a baby face, that's the way you'd want to go to fully cement your victory, to cement your your run. But Liv didn't do that, and that's why most of the time heels win that match because it's tailor-made for a heel to win based on when and how you cash in. So with that said, I mean, I, I know what you're saying. It's it's a step down if you look at it from a pure name brand value perspective. I mean, Ronda Rousey is a household name. I, I can bet you that most people, nine out of ten people in a household have no idea, maybe nine and a half if there's such a thing as a half a person have no idea who Liv Morgan is. So if you're looking at it from that perspective, sure. But you're, if you're looking at it from like a pure wrestling fan's perspective, this is not a demotion. This is back where it should be. You know? All right. Moving on. All right. I have this weird feeling creative is going to have Theory win back the United States Championship and then cash in on the dude. I will not name uh, name Roland Paynes. Can't even say his name. Huh? He's like Voldemort. You know, is, is you know, you, what what do they say in uh, it's Harry Potter? I haven't seen the the series in a while. Um, Thou you shall, the name you shall not say or something. I, I forget what they say. Um, there's a saying for for Voldemort. You don't say his name or whatever, or maybe he's Beetlejuice. If you say him three times, he'll appear. Uh, too many stupid movie references. Uh, so not all, not hold all the belts for long. Just, uh, but just tick a box. Cheers for now, Grim. Well. They could have Theory do that in theory. See what I did there? Uh, but I don't think that's the best use of the United States Championship to as a prop. Because Number one, we've, we've just saw him as champion. Bobby Lashley as champion is fun. We have Theory holding the money in the bank briefcase. That's essentially as good as holding a WWE championship because it nearly guarantees, nearly, that you are going to become champion. So... Sure, Bobby's holding the United States Championship, but uh, arguably Theory has more than that. So I, I don't think they're going to put all their eggs in one basket with Theory right now. I, I think that would be very foolhardy. As I said earlier, too much too soon for the guy. It's just not a good... It's it's it's. I, I don't think it would benefit him, honestly. So, all right. Uh, so, all right, let's get to our next patron's message. That's right. That's right, guys. Uh, that That's Mr. Dennis McGinley, the one man who has entrance music on this podcast. Now, I don't want this to be a theme, guys. <laughs> I don't want to have to play entrance music for everybody, okay? Uh, if, if you weren't a patron, Dennis, I'd probably, uh, you know, second guess it. However, uh, thank you, Dennis, for that. And again, Carmella Hayes, I got to say, you know, I, th- I said this last time, I think. I love that music. God, that's some catchy. That's ca- that's a little catchy tune, and I love the entrance uh, video that goes with it. Okay, so he says, "Hey Matt, to to you and to um to Matt and all you pigs and piglets." I don't know if that's a Winnie the Pooh reference. I'm guessing not. But let's move on. I am I am and always will be staying in my heel character, Mr. Dennis McGinley. So Matt, I want you to explain to all these dumb unknown piglets what a heel is and what a babyface is. Uh, okay, so before I move on. I mean, in layman's terms, I mean, there's, should I really though? <laughs> if you, there's almost a 0% chance that if you're listening to a wrestling podcast, if you don't know what those two terms are, it, it, it's, it's almost zero. But for anyone out there, maybe you are brand new. And if you are, a heel is a bad guy, a baby face is a good guy. <laughs> okay. I don't know how else to simplify it. Now that you heard what Matt said, get it through your, all your piglet brains you're going and you will hate me um everyone's email on the show is trash also about that group i did a chair shot to my last member and now i stand alone are you batista in him <laughs> i walk no that's i walk alone not i stand alone uh you and all your your neiman lion and kanye twitty can go stick it and send it straight up your big pig blank I'm out. Have a great day and talk with you next week. I got my message across these these piglets until the 13th. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You bring a little flavor to the show there, Dennis. You bring a little flavor, I got to say. All right. Well, thank you, buddy. And let's move on. I've got 
another email here, and I believe it did not come through the Patreon system, so let's dive into it. Um, let's get to Memphis Mark, who's emailing us, and he says <clears throat> uh, that um, this is Memphis Mark emailing you from where I just had to give my two cents on the Shotzi episodes. She made fun of Chris Jericho, and now she's had the same problem. Performance in the ring, I don't agree with people jumping on her enough to make her deactivate her Twitter account and social media accounts. People can be mean, but she shouldn't go barking up that tree until she has some years of experience under her belt. Just my opinion. Spay and neuter. As always, I'm out. Mark, you're going to have to explain this to me. Maybe I have been just in my own bubble. Um, and I'll take your word for it because I, I'm often not up to date on wrestling, like uh, things like this. So you're saying that she was trashing Chris Jericho um, and, or she made fun of Chris Jericho, but she's also had performance issues in the ring. So basically you're saying she has no ground to stand on given that she is somewhat of a, she's green as they say newbie. And you know, people, I guess were you say jumping on her on Twitter and making fun of her or crapping on her ring in ring ability. I'm assuming that's what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, look, it's kind of twofold. Because when you get into this business or you, you, you even make you're in the public eye at all, you open yourself up to this criticism. I don't care what sport, if you're a news anchor or a, you know, a professional sports athlete or a movie star, TV star, if you're in the public eye, you choose that profession. You understand that this is what comes with the territory. You know this is likely going to happen. Hell, I mean, I'm not a public figure, I wouldn't say, but I get crap all the time, all the time. I don't get death threats, okay, but I I, I do get, uh, you know, criticism of my show, the way I say things, my arrogance that apparently I have, which I really don't think I do. But, you know, I mean, one of these days, guys, I'm, and I'll maybe make that on my TikTok next, like some of the comments people have left and reviews people have left about this show, it's classic. And I'm not doing it because like I'm actually hurt by it. I just I truly do find it entertaining at this point. But anyway, uh, so anyway, that comes with the territory. That comes with the territory, and so that's the one way to look at it. You know, like you can expect it. On the flip side, that doesn't give anybody a free pass to just do and say what they want. You know, and and also it comes down to like maturity. Is social media really the place you need to go and try to make somebody feel bad about themselves? Are, are, are we in, are we in middle school? You know, are we gonna wear? Are we gonna wear pink on Wednesdays? Like, I mean, we we can't sit here. I'm making Mean Girls references, but yeah, yeah, I mean, so there's two ways to look at it. But if that's the case, I mean, I, I think there's blame on both sides. So, all right, well, thank you there, uh, Mr. Memphis Mark, and we we also got a uh, we got a definition of mullet manor for those asking. There is a definition out there. It's his retirement home. Put it that way. That's all it is. I love the name. It's very catchy. Okay, so let's die. Let's uh, get into, and I want to make sure. God, I'm, I'm sometimes I'm awful at this. I don't see any other patrons. There's always some one of the patrons that that chime in. They're like, "Why didn't you, you know, put me in the mailbag?" I don't see anybody. Okay, I don't. So if I missed a patron, you know, uh, unsubscribe or something. <laughs> Teach me a lesson. Um, all right. Let's get to the uh, non-patrons, and this is from Levi, and he says, so would you rather have Akira Tozawa main event WrestleMania or the 24-7 championship main event of pay-per-view? Uh, and I also hear John Cena won't have his match uh, next match until WrestleMania 39. Okay, well, let me answer your last statement or question first about WrestleMania 39 being John Cena's net last or next match. Yeah, I mean, I, I could see that. I mean, uh, it, it seems plausible given that he's not going to be at SummerSlam because many thought Theory versus Cena was happening. It's not happening. Theory's going against Bobby Lashley, so that rules out John Cena. Uh, not 100% in terms of showing up some in some capacity, but most likely. Um, as far as Akira Tozawa main event, WrestleMania, or the 24-7 championship main event, I mean, do they have to be mutually exclusive? or do, like Does it have to be one or the other? Are, are you saying, you know, wouldn't Akira Tozawa by default be in a 24-7 championship match? <laughs> um, but if they're separate, I guess it would 
depend on who's on the other side of the ring of Akira Tozawa because he's a, you know, Akira Tozawa is yeah you know, he's a cruiserweight. I don't mind cruiserweight wrestling. I guess my answer, without even thinking too much, I think I'm overthinking it. Akira Tozawa main event of WrestleMania. No, no it wouldn't even be a question. Because I, I think the 24-7 championship is a uh, mockery of championships. I'm not a fan. There you go. Um, so let's, uh, let's move on. And let's get to, let's see. Let's get to Phil. Phil writes in and says, Hey, Matt, I hope this finds you in time for the mailbag. Well, guess what it did. First off, Money in the Bank was a good show. I agree with you. Theory winning was not how I would do it. Like you, I wanted Seth. The moment he was announced, I knew he would win. It just pissed me off to no end. I almost turned it off and didn't want to watch. I really like Theory. He's doing great, a great job as a heel, and WWE nailed it. Their job is to make us hate him, and I do. I want him to get his ass kicked and then kicked again. Don't know what they'll do. Do you really think he'll cash in at SummerSlam? Well, I gave you my thoughts earlier in the in the show, so I think that question is answered. But yeah, I mean, theory. The question is to to from me to you is when you say you want to see him get his ass kicked, though that that leans on the side of WWE doing their job, right? Not on the side of this product sucks. I don't want to watch. I'm going to watch. I don't know Stranger Things, right? I'm going to watch uh, Umbrella Academy. People keep recommending that to me, by the way. The Umbrella Academy is that good? Am I missing out? I don't know. But anyway, so yeah, there's different. There's a difference there. But uh, okay, then moving on. Do you think he'll cash in? I answered that. Uh, do, let's see. And does Seth Rollins get back into the title picture? I want him to, but I can't see it anytime soon. Suppose it's still on for Drew at Clash at the Castle. See, this is the big problem with Roman Reigns. You're having him completely bury the championship to the point where we know there's no championship available for guys like Seth Rollins that are deserving, that we'd love to see in a championship match that are more than overdue, more than overdue for a championship run. So do I see it anytime soon? Unfortunately not. I don't. Uh, it's, it's just, it's frustrating. You know, until Roman drops the belts, or at least one of the belts. I don't care if they somehow ununify them and make it, you know, just the universal and WWE again. I don't care. I don't care what they have to do. Reverse osmosis. I don't. Whatever it is, just get one championship at least back on Raw, and Roman can still claim his championship run, and everyone's happy, and the days keep ticking along for Roman. Until that happens, I mean, there, there's really nobody around except Brock and Drew. Uh, like that's it, and you have Theory floating around too, so. I agree. It's a sad moment. I mean, unless the only way I can see it is if Seth wins the Rumble, you know, that 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 might be unfortunately the next landmarker that you can you can take a look at. The video teaser that was shown, you think it's Bray Wyatt. If you dive deeper all over the internet, they're saying it's Edge. You can see all the references to former opponents he faced. I would love it to be Bray, but can't see that happening. Plus, if I was WWE, I would have him just show up, not even tease it. Well, now you just gave me something even more fun, Phil. In my brain, I was concocting it as you were explaining something, and you could be very well right. This could be Edge. And while every time they put a teaser out there for whoever this is, they um, they, they have Bray Wyatt trending on Twitter. So I think the majority of fans hope it's Bray. As I've said before, it's Wyatt or they're going to riot. Why would they make the man mysterious? What are they going to do to Edge that they can't show it in the video trailer? We already know. Okay, they're showing like a church. They're showing all this stuff. What kind of character transformation could he possibly have gone through that fans are going to care about? He already went from the rated R superstar to this dark character. So the video teasers are also dark. Is he still that same character? Well, who cares, right? I mean, in terms of we already know that that's how he left. So it wouldn't be that much of a shock or they wouldn't put that much effort into creating these videos. If he's just going to return as the same guy he left as, and they're being mysterious with the the person who's in these videos. Um, to me, it's Wyatt or they riot. Now, while I was thinking it, what about edge and Wyatt forming their own union, their unholy Alliance? What about that? What about Bray Wyatt and edge aligning? What about that? Hey, People can dream, 
But uh, interesting to see what will happen on Friday night. You have any ideas about what they might do and what matches will happen? You think they might eventually get an Intercontinental title back on a pay-per-view. Great show as always. Love listening, Phil. Well, thanks, Phil. And uh, I, I don't know what matches are advertised for SmackDown. Let me, let me, uh, I'm going to go to WWE's website because as of right now, I don't know what the heck is um, supposed to be on SmackDown this week. I'm clicking on the show. Let's see SmackDown. Um, I don't see anything. I really don't. Um, wait, no. It says Roman Reigns returns this Friday. That's uh, the big headline. That's what I got. So Roman Reigns returns right now. <laughs> That's what I've got. And hey, whoever wants to show up from Raw can show up because there's no brand split anymore. I mean, they might as well put that up there too. But uh, yeah, and, and one last thing, the Intercontinental title. Can, can somebody get me a stat on the last time the Intercontinental title was defended on a premium live event? It's embarrassingly long. And now that Gunther has it, which I'm a huge fan of, you'd imagine that that should change at SummerSlam. SummerSlam will probably be the first time that we see the, the Intercontinental Championship defended in, what, a year more? So, all right. Thanks, Phil. And let's see, we have one more email, one more email and then voicemails. We, we, uh, will go. So this is Jeff from the Philippines. What's going on, buddy? So he says, I recommend that you watch Christian's promo from AEW dynamite two weeks ago. He recently turned heel by attacking jungle boy and Luchasaurus. Uh, and he's now Christian's heavy. He cut a really good promo and it shows why heel Christian is better than his baby face version. I heard a lot of rumblings about this. I'll have to actually make the effort to, to see it. Uh, at the, as of the end of June, AEW has 172 wrestlers, and that still does not count Claudio Casta, uh, Castaglani, I can't say it, Cesaro, <laughs> there we go, uh, who recently signed with the company. It's a huge roster for a company that only has three hours of TV every week. I know Tony Khan bought Ring of Honor, but it still has no regular weekly show and only does uh, pay-per-views. Yeah, I mean, I, that's a big, a big roster for a, a little bit of content, but also... Doesn't that make the guys who are on the roster work harder because there's more of them to get on the show? In theory, you would think that that would be the case. But also, I think Tony does it to uh, to, to create buzz, right? He's still he's still got a baby par, a baby an infancy of a, of a of a of a company compared to WWE, and he has to create a buzz. And uh, I don't think he's just blindly choosing people every time Vince lets somebody go. But if they're a good fit and they're a bigger name and they feel he feels like that they can make an impact in AEW, then you know he pulls the trigger. Do you think Vince is pushing Theory harder than the way he pushed Roman? I get it that he's a heel, and that is why in storyline he gets opportunities handed to him. However, it seems like they are overexposing him. I want to see where Theory's money in the bank is going to, but it seems too early to insert him in the world title picture. That's all for today. Hope everything's going well. Thanks, buddy. And yeah, same to you. As far, yeah, I mean, I already mentioned theory, so I'll, I guess I won't talk too much about that. But, um, well, as far as um, overexposing him, I mean, and, and then he's not ready for the world title picture. I did mention that. But do I think he's being pushed harder than Roman Reigns? Um, Roman Reigns, it's hard to tell because Roman Reigns is just incessant push by Vince lasted like seven years as a baby face. It might have been maybe six years, whatever. Uh, it was a long, long time, several years. Theory's only been around for like the last year, barely, right? Remember he was with Zelina Vega in, in their group. I think he was with, was it Angel Garza? He was in that group for like a blink of an eye during the pandemic era. And then they like couldn't stop fighting and they broke up for no reason. And yeah, that that's the last time I remember Austin Theory. He goes back to AEW or goes back to uh, NXT and then he gets repackaged and put on uh, television in the last six months. Maybe he's only been really relevant the last six months. And so um, do I think he's getting harder, pushed harder? I don't know if harder is the right word because it's such a short sample size compared to Roman Reigns' push that lasted several years. I will say this, they're, they're taking the right path and turning him or making him a heel first instead of just trying to shove the baby face roll down, down our throats. So that certainly is a, a smart thing. Thanks, Jeff, from the Philippines. And I think that is it for our emails. We're going to take a break. 
and give some love to the sponsor of today's episode. And then we're going to be right back with voicemails. So stay right here. So in addition to pro wrestling that I need every day, I don't know about you. I need coffee every day and I need quality coffee. That's why I go with coffee of Valhalla.com. They get fresh roasted specialty coffee roasted the day it ships to your door. Again, it's coffee of Valhalla.com. That's coffee of V A L H A L L A V A L H A L L A.com because the owner is a former service member trying to take care of his battle buddies. He donates 50% of the proceeds to stopsoldiersuicide.org. So order today and use discount code 10 off, all one word, for a 10% discount. Or you can subscribe and save 15% off of your order. So go get some coffee again at coffeeofvalhalla.com. Coffee of V-A-L-H-A-L-L-A.com, guys. And also donate to a great cause and have a great cup of coffee, guys. Coffeeofvalhalla.com. Hello, WWE Podcast. This is Mike calling from Connecticut. And uh, first thing... First, I would just like to give a shout out to Mr. and Mrs. Wrestling, Casual Wrestling Fan. Uh, they do such a great job. They bring such great energy to the show, and I look forward to hearing their voices uh, every every pay per view. Excuse me, P L or whatever Matt you like to call it. Pl. <laughs> I always get a kick out of that. Uh, they they did do such a great job. But um, I wanted to let you guys know that. Keep it up. Keep up the great work. But my question is, what do you guys think about Bobby Lashley and Roman Reigns having a title feud? I know that the uh, it, the title is on the line for ca- the, 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 the castle thing with uh, Drew. But let's just say Roman gets past Drew. What about Bobby? and Roman. I mean, that could be a, a, an interesting storyline. Let me know what you think. Keep up the great work, guys. Hey, Mike. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm sure they heard the shout-out, but uh, I do certainly love when they come on every single uh, premium live event week, and uh, SummerSlam will be no different. In fact, Mr. Casual Wrestling Fan will be joining me on the SummerSlam Pre, I think it's a preview review. One of the two. Um, one of the. I think the preview show. Mr. Casual Wrestling Fan will be joining me as we uh, will reconnect for an actual show together, and then they'll also be doing the the mailbag that week. So it's going to be busy around the Casual Wrestling Fan household um, in in the uh, next few weeks. But um, I guess I'll take that as a compliment. Uh, you know what are you trying to say? I, I don't bring enough energy. You're saying my monotone, put you to sleep voice doesn't give you enough energy. What are you trying to say? Right. Uh, whatever. Who cares? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I, I it's, it is what it is. This is how I speak, right? It, people fall asleep to my voice. It is what it is. Um, and I, whatever, as long as you're listening, that's, that's the most important thing. Okay. Um, well, but Lashley versus Roman, I like it, but I don't think they're going there. Now here's the thing. Bobby could be inserted in any time at any point into the the, uh, the 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 title picture the universal title picture the unified championship picture at any time he's deserving there's he's got the qualifications he's, he's a veteran i mean there's there's nothing that would to, for me in my mind hold him back for you know not wanting to be in that title picture but i think wwe right now is looking probably at gunther versus bobby at survivor series because don't forget that's the only time guys the only, they can't even say that this year. You know what? They probably will. To insult our intelligence, they'll say it's the one time a year that SmackDown and Raw go head to head in competition. Yet now it's every week we have people on, on on opposing shows. But we'll hear it this 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 year just out of parody. Uh, but I think Gunther versus Bobby is probably where they're going to go this year. And they've got what is it June or July? What the hell month is it? So if it's July, they've got mm, that's a long time. They've got about four months till Survivor Series. I mean, that's a long run, you know, uh, in, in at least in, by today's standards. So they could be doing that. They could, you know, but certainly to your point, they could have Bobby Lashley go against Roman Reigns at any time. I mean, considering that the brand split is is effectively dead, they could insert Bobby if somebody gets injured. They don't know where to go for a month or two. They easily could. Now, the question is, is Bobby the one that could beat, that could end the streak? I wouldn't hate it. 
at this point, I honestly don't even care anymore <laughs> who does it. I used to have a big, you know, a big speech about who it should be and why it should be somebody young and all that. I don't even care anymore. They've made me to the point. They got me to the point where I'm just like anybody, somebody, anybody. Like, just do it. I don't care, you know, if it's our truth. Somebody, James Ellsworth, please come out of retirement. Do I mean whatever you're doing, <laughs> just come on back, you know. Uh, so, yeah, good stuff, Mike. Thank you, buddy. And uh, let's get to the next voicemail. Hey, it's Crawford from Baltimore. So I got done you know, watching Money in the Bank last night. I got done listening to, to your review review as well. Um, and let's talk about Liz and Theory. The fact that they had a, a lot of faith in having these two people who are in their early 20s, I think Liv is 27, Theory is 24, to have a win money that they could have Liv cash in. Again, having women cash in, saying that was very interesting, I don't know why they do that, but whatever. Um, is cool. The fact that they have that much faith in Liv and Theory is crazy to me. I'm intrigued how long Liv's going to be the SmackDown Women's Champion for. I think it, in some ways it was a smart move to make SmackDown somewhat interesting with a with a person that everyone likes and everyone doesn't care that much about Rousey at all and SmackDown's been seeking so having Liv won SmackDown because there's already a lot of star power on Raw anyway with Alexa, Becky, and you know all of them. So I like the fact that Liv. I will I'm sure what they do with Liv as champion and Theory as Mr. Money in the Bank. I think they it was too. Good winners this year for money to take, and that's it. Thanks for the call. Bye. Hello, Kyle. Hope all's well with you. And uh, yeah, I'm. You know, I'm glad you chimed in here. And you know, you, you talked about how WWE is showing faith in these young stars, given that they're in their mid twenties. I mean, yeah, definitely that that does show faith. But my now, let's take this apart one at a time. Live. As the SmackDown Women's Champion, number one, the way she won it as a babyface isn't the most credible way to win. Now, she won fair and square. She worked within the rules of the game. She didn't cheat to win, but it's still, regardless of, you know, uh, regardless of that, it still is not a great way, a great look for a babyface, especially one that has been scratching and clawing for so long to win it in that manner. But she won it, and people are fine with it, and I understand. And, and so that's that. But with Liv, I... I would, you know, they have faith in her, but I would imagine it's, it is a, a transitional spot for her. I think WWE is looking at Liv as a transitional champion. I don't think they're looking at her as a long-term champion. The only way that happens is if the fans will it to happen. Like they start really getting behind Liv where they're into her, they're into her matches. I mean, from start to finish, uh, you know, they're, they're chanting for her, making signs like social media. All that, because otherwise I think WWE is looking at this and saying, well, Liv will have her nice little fun three to four weeks and then she'll drop it at SummerSlam. I think there's a real chance of that, a real chance, especially if Bailey comes back and it's some kind of triple threat with Ronda and Bailey and Liv. I would suspect that Liv probably loses it at SummerSlam. So while you say they have faith in her, well, yeah, to hold it for like three to four weeks. That's my guess. Now, if it goes on longer, I'll be surprised. I won't. I won't hate it. I'll be cool with it. But I, I think it would take a pretty big push by the WWE fans to make the ch- the plans change here. Because I think Bailey, if she returns, is likely going to be crowned the SmackDown Women's Champion at SummerSlam. So, um, as far as theory goes, I mean, we'll, th- we're, it remains to be seen exactly. Um, when and how he cashes in. Now, I spent a little bit of time on the whole on this podcast talking about when he could cash in, and he said he's cash, cashing in at SummerSlam after the last man standing match. He still could, uh, but I, I have predicted that it's going to be a failed cash in, meaning he tries to cash in, you know, he gets his ass kicked, speared, and the bell never rings, and he he uh, fails cashing in, but still keeps the briefcase because the bell never rang. That's what I think is going to happen as of this moment. Uh, but you know. Again, I think they they have right now more faith in theory than they do Liv, even though Liv's been there longer. Because I think with Liv, they know what they have. I think with Liv, they know what they have. They have a a, a, a champion or a, a individual who fans have seen get abused and misused and losing match after match after match after match after match, and grinding her teeth in front of the fans. Where Theory is this guy that came up from NXT. He's a good looking dude. He was brought out of the wing of Vince McMahon. 
and yet he feels the part though. Like I, I am a huge theory fan right now. And to put him as champion though, as I've said earlier in the show is I think too much too soon. Uh, they have faith in him, but we'll see how far that faith goes. If they have him cash in and actually win, let's, let's have that happen first. Cause right now all he has in his hands is potential. It's not realized yet. So, all right. Well, Kyle, thank you. And I believe based on the transcription of this, uh, Voicemail, this is Mr. Memphis Mark, so let's see what he has to say. Hello, everyone. This is Memphis Mark coming to you from Mullet Manor uh, as of this taping. Hope everyone had a good July 4th. All right, the promo that is about to break the Internet. Every time they do this promo, Bray Wyatt starts trending. With good reason, because it looks like his uh, typical uh, setup or promo. But is it? I don't think so. Now, one of the things is, you got three options. You got Bray, which I don't think they're ready to bring him back yet. I think it's going to be forced upon him. Upon him. Then you have uh, Gabe Steven, Stevenson. Uh, ten gold medals. You know, the two-time NCAA champ. I'm not sure if anybody's done that since Kurt Angle. You know, he signed a NI, what is it, what do you call that, a uh, NIL deal next in line. So when are they going to debut him? But to me, I think it's Edge. Look at the video. The Dudley Boys glasses. Kurt Angle's medal. Eddie Guerrero's Latino Heat license plate. The Hardy Boys armband. I could be wrong. Hmm. Don't know. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see. All right, guys. Uh, you know, Raw was pretty good this week. I'm waiting for the uh, Montez Ford heel turn. And uh, you guys have a great, great week. Matt, that should give you a little something to think about there. And uh, and what's your opinion who that is? Uh, this is Memphis Mark and Spay and Nigger. Rescue when you can. I'm out. Well, Memphis Mark, you sent an email and a voicemail. Must be a special week. Well, I hope you had a, a wonderful fourth as well. And so I'm still sticking with Bray. I'm still sticking with Bray. You make a good a good observation about the items in that that promo, and I haven't gone back, and I probably should, you know, frame by frame. If I had the time, somebody does. I don't know where. Um, if you do, let me know um, because you're right. I believe you when you brought up those items that they flashed in my head. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember seeing that. I remember seeing that. But if you take it frame by frame, somebody's probably already decoded the thing. I, I, there's evidence for Edge. But as I've said, I mean, why why do that, though? Like, Edge left as a dark character. He left as a guy that, you know, had, had gone through a transformation. I was cutting really good heel promos, and a lot of us don't agree with the fact that he was booted from the group, and, and everything kind of died, and they, were, they had so much momentum, and they just killed it for no reason. They shot themselves in the foot for no good reason. So bringing him back is what, like this guy that still is stark? It's like, okay, well, why why are we creating promos for this? You know, I, it feels that something like this feels like it should be for somebody that hasn't been there in a long time, not somebody that's been out for like a month. Edge has been out for about a month. And, and, and it feels like it should be for somebody like Bray, though. That's the thing. And, and there was some, some uh, you know, I, I remember I saw an old cemetery, an old church or something. And sure, that points to Edge, but couldn't it also point to Bray? There's a lot of dark religious stuff that he's into in, in his character anyway. Plus the Edison light bulbs. The Edison light bulbs, to me, are the biggest and most prominent item in that entire promo that Bray constantly used in, in, in how many hundreds of promos he did in WWE where he would stand backstage and there'd be that Edison light bulb in front of him and he'd have Eric Rowan and Luke Harper next to him. 
Uh, you know, he cut. This, uh, it felt like the same promo every week, but that was his style, and that those those lights appeared in this promo. Uh, and I just feel like if it's not Wyatt, as I've said, I feel like I'm going to get this trending. I'm like so proud of myself, uh, but no, really, it's Wyatt or people will riot. And hopefully not in real life. I mean, we see enough of that in, in today's society, but um, hopefully it's. You know, not actually, but it, it, I guess metaphorically, people are going to be pissed, right? That's what I'm trying to say. If it's not Bray Wyatt, I actually think people would be disappointed it's Edge. I mean, they have built up this now for a couple of weeks, and we're probably going to see more of them as the weeks go on. Um, and they also had it appear on SmackDown, but if, you know, again, there's no brand split. So if it's not Bray, I think people would even be turned off that it's Edge. You know, because there's there's now this expectation that it's Bray and you're seeing it on social media every time they run this Bray Wyatt trends, which tells you people are thinking it's Bray. And if it's not, they're going to go, ah, it's Edge like we love you, Edge, but uh, we want Bray back, you know. So I think there's going to be some disappointment there if it's not, even if Edge is the guy. Now, if it's Gable, Gabe, Gable or Gabe Stevenson, not Stevenson. Yeah, they, they took out the N. It's just Stevenson. I'll never get that right. I mean, I it could be, but boy, wouldn't that be a a change of pace from what we saw at WrestleMania, right? I and mean, he's just coming in with this just just hard gimmick of being this dark character, presumably, right? Um, I, I almost think there's no chance it's Gabe Stevenson. Now he has certainly the credentials and all that, but I don't think that they would bring him in like that. You know, I think they would ease him in. You know, maybe do um, some actual like video packages on his career like they did at WrestleMania talk about his accomplishments from a, a, a amateur perspective which are very very admirable and respectable I mean you know, top one percent of one percent of a half percent of people accomplish what he's accomplished so it, I don't think it's Gabe Stevenson I don't but um do you think it's Edge I think it's Bray regardless I think we can probably both agree if it's even if it's Edge people are going to be a bit disappointed so just because there's now this expectation and you see it, the evidence is right there on social media. All right, Mark. Thank you, buddy. And uh, final couple of voicemails and we'll wrap it up. Hey, man, it's Justin from Maryland. Just want to get my thoughts on a couple of topics about the money in the bank headed to SummerSlam. So first, the Judgment Day. Um, I was definitely kind of disappointed that they lost their first match um, as a tag team. Uh no disrespect, Eddie Guerrero, you know, the, the finish was fine, but I just felt like, you know, that they should be winning their matches, especially since Edge is going to be coming back soon. So, I mean, I guess the uh, the finish kind of protect them in a way, you know, they wasn't pinned, but I need to see them winning. Hopefully we get a Ray versus Finn match next week, and hopefully Finn wins, because I need to see Judgment Day uh, win before they start this feud with Edge. And speaking of Edge, I think... Um, I wish that that uh, that video pack that video package that they keep showing is him. But you say it's Bray Wyatt, but I think it's Edge because I've been seeing on Twitter and stuff like in the video, it's like uh, Kurt Angle's medals and like the Del- um, W Boys glass and stuff like that. So I think it's Edge, but hopefully, I really want Bray Wyatt to come back. I miss him in the theme. Um, I always wanted him to come back and take the title off Roman since we never got that Roman and Fiend match. So, who knows? We'll see. Next, uh, Liv winning. Um, I definitely like that. I wanted Alexa Bliss or Beck or a Becky to win, but Liv was fine too. She hasn't won the world title. I I can honestly agree with you that that whole time when Ronda and her was standing in the ring, I was like, Ronda, you can clock her right now, like turn heel, hit her in the face. But she didn't do it. So maybe they're saving that. But I heard that the plan is for Ronda and Liv at SummerSlam. So hopefully we get a hint of a heel turn because I was definitely hoping that Ronda was going to attack Liv because I was just like, yes, this is the opportunity. But... That'd be a good match. I don't think uh, Ronda's going to win the title back, but Liv should definitely have some good feuds on SmackDown. And finally, uh, Theory winning the Money in the Bank. I I knew exactly when he came out that he was going to win. Wanted Seth to win. Um, 
I just hope that Theory doesn't cash in successfully. He said he's going to try SummerSlam, and I just hope. I don't think that they're ever going to take the title off Roman so soon anyway, so I don't think he's going to have a successful cash in. But it's fine with the title. He's an annoying heel. Uh, Bobby Lashley beating him was was definitely very satisfying to me. He he, he tapped out. I was I was happy about that. So just hoping that he doesn't uh, win. And I'm glad Seth finally got a win on Raw. I'm hoping that. Hey Justin. So okay, let's let's dive into a, a couple of things that you said. Everybody keeps pointing. I'm mean, not say everybody. The second person in a row here to point out the items in that video that I was not privy to. I mean, look, you you could be right. Both you and Memphis Mark, both of you guys, you, there's a there's a good chance both of you are correct because of the items in that video. I have the I have only one thing to hang on to in that video, outside of the general theme of darkness and and and, and churches and old cemeteries, whatever else they showed, uh, which could be easily tied to Bray Wyatt, is the Edison light bulb. Explain the Edison light bulb to me, though. You know, like okay. You see the medals in there. You see the Dudley Boy glasses. But, I mean, Bray Wyatt, look what he did with John Cena at the WrestleMania 36 in their House of Horrors or their, um, what was it, the, uh, the, 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 the playground match, whatever they had. That was far from a match. It was just a, an acid trip, um, at least in my mind. Many people view that match, and I say match loosely, as some kind of ingenious work from Picasso. I, I, I look at it as just gobbledygook, overthought, and uh, not wrestling at all. But that said, there's a lot of stuff in there that you would never expect to be related to Bray Wyatt that he brought out in John Cena talking about Hulk Hogan. He brought Vince McMahon into it. Uh, you know, a lot of references and cute little clever things that John Cena was thought to be over the years and you know that kind of thing. Uh, and, and you know, so Bray has done these things before now how they relate to the Dudleys or the Hardys or Kurt Angle they don't I mean like Bray has almost no connection with them and in fact it does point to edge so the evidence there does point to edge but the Edison light bulb and the fact that I actually think people are going to be a little bit angry if it's just edge because people would rather see Bray like people love edge but they're going through all this for what to have edge come back again is just maybe there is some metamorphosis on his end to turn him baby face I, I don't know I mean, I won't hate it if it's Edge. I just, I'll be a bit disappointed like everyone else. So, and the Edison light bulb is the only thing I have to hang on to. That's it. Um, so, let's see here. Uh, yeah. Um, as far as Liv versus Ronda at SummerSlam, if that's the plan, be prepared for Ronda to be the de facto heel. And then when Ronda wins, which she probably will, I'd imagine if she wins, uh, imagine the crowd booing her and then Bailey's music hitting. I mean, the crowd would explode, kind of like Becky's return last year did uh, against Bianca Belair, where Becky turned heel, except Bailey would turn babyface upon her return uh, with Ronda turning heel, which I, I would argue Ronda's already a heel. She's been a heel since day one, you could argue. But you have Bailey return after she beats Liv and the people are booing and Bailey's music hits. So think about that one. I, I just I, I've been predicting Bailey's return. For so long because she, I, I keep falling victim to her Instagram account and, and being a fool. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm sometimes I'm so gullible. Even 25 years later as a wrestling fan, I'm, I still fall for crap. All right. So uh, thanks, buddy. Thanks, Justin. And uh, we will get to our final voicemail. Let's see who it is. Hey, Matt and the podcast family. It's uh, Permafire Kyle. So. First off, I thought Money in the Bank, honestly, was five out of five stars. I know some people, a lot of people have not said that. I just enjoyed it so much. The one thing I do agree with, agree with everybody else and yourself is the theory the theory win, Money in the Bank win. I didn't, I was not a fan of that. Blue Morgan, yes, big fan of that one. I loved that. Uh, Uthless Fruit Profits, match of the year candidate, definitely. That was freaking awesome. Uh... And then on Raw the next night, the four people live party was not very good. So that kind of, that, that was bad, but mind the bank was good. But I enjoyed the show so much. I thought it was five out of five. I think it was the best pay reviews probably for WrestleMania. I thought it was that good, honestly. Uh, not looking forward to Logan Paul and the Miz, I just don't care about that. I'm not getting Corbin seems okay. Whatever. 
Uh, but here's what I'm excited for. I hope Bobby Lesnar retains that SummerSlam against Theory because if Intercontinental Champion and United States Champion fights, if I were series, I know, I agree with Matt, like Raw vs. SmackDown, it's a dumb thing, the brand, brand versus brand thing. It's a stupid concept. But there's one thing I'll be hyped for at the Virus Series. Gunther, not Gunther, because I agree with Matt, it's dumb. Just say Gunther. Gunther versus Bobby Lashley. That will be fun at the Virus Series. That's going to be fun. So, I think that's it. So, three minutes almost up already. By the way, I'm going to be on vacation next week for like seven days. I'm going to have to busy. I'm going to just catch up on Raw and XT and SmackDown like when I get back. I'm going to watch all, everything I missed, that AEW Dynamite Rampage, all that. But I'm going to still listen to your podcast while I'm gone. And, you no, know, just stay called off on everything. But I'm leaving this leaving this Saturday. I'm not going to be back till next Sunday. So that means I'll probably not be on next week's mailbag. But the week, week after, I'll be back. So, I still, I still like I said, I'm going to catch up. I'm going to keep up. I'll still listen to next week's mailbag. I just, I just won't be on it. So, yeah. Anyway, that's it. Uh, thanks as always. And I'll talk to all of you in two weeks. Well, Kyle, I think we can all say enjoy your vacation. I don't know where you're going, but uh, stay safe, have fun, and uh, enjoy your enjoy your little break. But so, yeah, I'm here, just a couple of things because I know you, you recapped a little, a little bit of uh, money in the bank as a whole. You gave it five out of five stars. I understand why you did. I, I think that it's from a wrestling perspective. Uh, you, you can argue some of the matches made it five out of five stars, even if the rest of the card wasn't, you know, a five out of five. Now, you just because you give it a five out of five, I'd imagine that not every match you saw was a five out of five stars. I mean, that that's, you know, that certainly is probably not the case. But as a whole, the pay per view for you was a five out of five, and I understand. I understand that it, it was a very good pay per view. I think it overachieved. So to your to your point about Bobby and Gunther, yeah, they're, I just think that that's probably where they're headed. But again, Survivor Series is four months away. It's not exactly around the corner. I mean, we've got a lot of a lot of stuff to get through before we get to Gunther and Bobby Lashley. And and as the uh, a previous caller mentioned, you know, we could get Bobby Roman as a fill in, you know, or is Bobby even being the one to beat Roman? Who knows? We still got Randy Orton also floating out there. We haven't even mentioned his name at all. I think Randy Orton is a very, uh, a very high candidate to take the belt off of Roman. You know, don't for, so, which also makes it an even stronger case that Roman's not going to lose at SummerSlam because wouldn't you want Randy to be also a contender to take the belt off of Roman? So uh, the other thing is, whenever Randy returns, maybe it is at SummerSlam, maybe it's after whatever. We if Roman doesn't drop a championship, if they can do that by Survivor Series. I tweeted this out and somebody created it. I'm not going to take credit for it. That at Survivor Series, since they do Raw versus SmackDown and title versus title, Roman would have to face himself at Survivor Series <laughs> in a champion versus champion match uh, because there is no uh, uh, there, there is no separate champion. I mean, he'd have to face himself. You know, he is the WWE and Universal, right? So, I mean, uh, and there's a graphic I, I tweeted out too. By the way, follow me on Twitter at wrestling underscore audio. I tweeted it out, and someone created it, and it's Roman and Roman. Like somebody created a graphic for it, uh, so it was, it, was, it was pretty clever. But uh, that that, you, that would have you would think point to Roman dropping the belt, but I mean, at this point, I'm not holding on to anything. It's just it's been nearly two years, just about two years now that Roman has been champion. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And uh, so, all right, everybody, thank you for joining us here on the WWE Podcast Mailbag. It was just about an hour where I wanted to be. And thank you to all the emails, all the calls. Much appreciated. I'll, I will be back uh, Sunday for the weekend review with a co-host, I hope. I think I've got a co-host lined up. We'll see. Uh, and then, of course, NXT and AEW reviews are coming. Mimi is back. So that's a good thing. Uh, not that we did enjoy Memphis, Mark. We did. You did an excellent job. Um, you know, it's just... Mimi uh, it really did a nice just kind of she she was just been a nice fit and I know that uh, people have been missing her and uh, so she's back and um, certainly you guys uh, can uh, contribute anytime to the mailbag by emailing us or calling all that info is in the description of this show so everybody thank you for your contributions consider going ad free at patreon.com slash WWE podcast and I will talk to you next time. So in addition to pro wrestling that I need every day, 
I don't know about you, I need coffee every day, and I need quality coffee. That's why I go with coffeeofvalhalla.com. They get fresh roasted specialty coffee, roasted the day it ships to your door. Again, it's coffeeofvalhalla.com. That's coffee of V-A-L-H-A-L-L-A, V-A-L. H-A-L-L-A dot com because the owner is a former service member trying to take care of his battle buddies. He donates 50% of the proceeds to StopSoldierSuicide.org. So order today and use discount code 10 off all one word, for a 10% discount, or you can subscribe and save 15% off of your order. So go get some coffee again at coffeeofvalhalla.com, coffee of V-A-L-H-A-L-L-A.com, guys, and also donate to a great cause and have a great cup of coffee, guys. Coffeeofvalhalla.com. Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show or head to wwepodcast.com and for all of these shows ad free head over to patreon.com slash wwe podcast until then we'll see you next time